Welcome back everyone once again for a new tier list. And if you're wondering why another tier list, that's because the last heavy truck tier list we've done was at the end of the year two pass. And now currently we are at the end of the year three pass. So I thought I would do a little update here because some trucks have changed position. And also we have some newcomers that we need to discuss here. So as for a quick disclaimer, this is just my personal tier list. It's based upon well over 4,200 hours of gameplay and testing. I've been playing SnowRunner pretty much exclusively since launch, and I've also done a lot of testing on the side and editing for videos and such that's not included in those hours. And the channel has specifically dedicated its efforts into understanding the performance of trucks by the SnowRunner developers and other areas of interest as well. And those can be uh, viewed if you go to my page as well. As mentioned in prior tier list videos, this is going to be my personal tier list. It's based upon my reviews and also my current working knowledge on them. Also keep in mind that I am going to have my favorites and I'm going to have some bias, but I am going to try to be as fair as possible. And lastly, I believe that each clash should be ranked differently because there's a belief that each clash should have a specific role or roles. And with those roles associated with each class, I will rank each truck accordingly. When ranking this class, I will quickly put up the trucks that have been ranked in prior videos and trucks that have changed position or the newcomers will be spoken about in minor detail. So ranking the heavy class has actually been one of the harder tasks for me to do for two reasons. The first is the belief that some of these trucks should be either in the heavy duty class or also the off-road class. Based upon their weights and their attributes, they seem to be more along the lines of said classes. The second reason is a lot of these trucks just don't have a lot of add-ons and they are very focused for specific roles, which is not a bad thing. However, ranking them against trucks that do is a difficult task. However, in general, I feel the larger heavy trucks in the game had a correct identity from SnowRunner's publish date in 2020 to around roughly when we started getting the massive heavy trucks that could essentially equip most add-ons in the game. It is my belief that the large heavy trucks should be able to be used for special mission trailers, rescues, and also doing things when you've exhausted your other class's performance capabilities. So for the new additions during the year three, having insane amounts of add-ons doesn't really give them a whole lot of merit in my humble opinion. Overall, I will rank the largest heavy trucks based upon how they've impacted my gameplay with respect to power, stability, maneuverability, and trustworthiness when setting them against a task at hand. All right, so with all that being said, let's get started here on our tier list. Let's start with the D category and then we'll move up to the C and then we'll start filling these out accordingly. First, we're gonna throw up in here something that hasn't really changed positions, which is the Caterpillar 770G. I do generally like the Caterpillar 770G, comes in at 31.8 US tons, has a 250,000 torque engine. This engine used to be the prior number two way back in the day, I think up until maybe season six, actually maybe till season eight, who knows. But uh, it essentially has been a truck that hasn't had much use for a lot of the player base since season two. It only has a heavy saddle and it also only has a heavy fuel carrier but this is a pretty good value of fuel that it can hold as a support trailer or a support unit, I would say. I wish this was like semi-tanker value to just kind of give players an incentive to, to use it more potentially. However, the problem is, is getting this thing to a forward position out there in the, the deepest areas because it only has always on differential locking and no all wheel drive. Steering is not too tight. And also it's just a massive hulking vehicle that's very slow. And yes, if you have used it on season two, usually you have to have an escort just to complete this mission with the rock trailer. So I think just because of those things, I use it I use it a lot to be honest. However, the thing is, I don't think a lot of players use it. And even though it has impacted my gameplay on my hard mode, essentially, I think in normal mode, I would just reach for another, another vehicle that could just potentially use a fuel carrier and maybe a hitch trailer behind it and has all wheel drive but it is, an, it is a good truck to use for um, for hard mode. I do still keep mine and use it, but I just believe it, it does stay where it's going to stay, to be quite honest. 
Okay, next, let's move up to, this is gonna be something that changes place, and it's actually the Kiravets K700. I, this was ranked actually, I think, up here in one of these two categories before. However, I kind of rethought the both of the Kiravets tractors, and we'll kind of talk about this. So here's the Kiravets K700. This was like an iconic vehicle back in the day for basically mud runner, snow, mud runner and uh, I believe spin tires. And this, this vehicle comes into the game, I think the only RU vehicle that's a licensed vehicle, as well as the K7M. So it has this engine here that's the KZ GT8 530 Tango engine. However, please be advised, this is not a 260,000 torque engine. This is actually a 175,000 torque engine. It's still 5,000 higher than the K7M, which is a lot, a lot heavier. However, this is not that strong of an engine at 175,000 torque. This vehicle vehicle comes in at 15.9 tons, US tons. So yeah, it's a, it's a decent heavy vehicle. It has bigger tires, um, has its own stock um, custom tires, which are nice to use. I would probably use those as well. And also Jats, that if you have that pack as well, it gets pretty good gas mileage, but essentially if you do not buy a season eight, I really don't think you're missing out on much to be honest, because while you can use it as a repair vehicle and potentially a rescue vehicle with its articulation and just driving an articulated vehicle and looking at some of the vehicles that are going to be up here in the B, the A and the S tier, this is just something I've never decided to reach for because it just had insane performance. It's It just kind of gets overshadowed and I don't think I even have used the manipulator crane for anything. Um, I think in the past and in, in past installments of the spin tire series, this kind of has been a staple, like I said, of, of those, those games, but in the game of SnowRunner, it's just not used for much, especially after farming. I essentially just put this thing in the garage and it kind of just collects dust. But if you would like to use it, it actually is a pretty good truck to use with always on features, 63 inch tires, 90 gallons, 340 liters fuel capacity. It can get some things done in that, that fashion. but. In my opinion, I think it just stays down here to see because it just really hasn't impacted my gameplay um, because of the other stronger trucks that I think can do the job just much better. Okay, let's move on to the B tier. I'm gonna kind of throw up three trucks here that are gonna go right in here and we'll do these all at the same time. You're gonna see a lot of trucks in the B tier and probably potentially a lot of trucks up here in these two because the heavy class is just, uh, it's been getting stronger and stronger when a lot of the other classes kind of have been staying the same. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with a lot of the places the heavy class is going. However, let's talk about these three trucks here. So anyways, 1424, 1430, and also the 49X. So we'll talk about these three and then we'll move on. Okay, so first off the 1430, um, this is my favorite Western Star DLC truck. It comes in at 220,000 torque. It shares this engine with pretty much all the Western Star Wolfpack DLCs and also the 49X as well. Really strong engine. Comes in at 11.2 US tons. I believe all three trucks I just placed up into this class. I believe they also pretty much should be moved over to the heavy duty class. And I think if you did that, these three would probably sit pretty high up in that class. I think they would rank I would say among the top. Some I would have to kind of like maybe think about, but I think this one right here probably would fit at the top of the class. And here's why. It's the only Western Star DLC truck to have OHD tires, which is a heavy weight tire, not a, a medium tire like the rest of them get. Um, even the heavy duty trucks, they don't get any heavy weight tires. Bad thing about this truck is, well, it's ground clearance, also has 44 inch tires and cannot get a race suspension to increase that tire size. However, it does exceptional with 44 inch tires when set up against its brothers. Um, it quickly became my favorite during the Western Star Wolfpack DLC release when there was no all wheel drive attached to any of these vehicles. The only truck that had even had a diff lock was the 1424 and even then, when I set these things up to pull heavy loads, some reason the 1430 was just outperforming them all. And I believe it is due to these super weight or not super weight, these heavy set tires here. This truck has really surprised me, um, probably more so when it got the all wheel drive upgrade. 
I tend to use this one more than any of them. It has a ton of add-ons. It's very versatile. Something I would say also is its dead axle. Um, I think this is an eyesore for people, especially seeing two of them. However, this really doesn't scare me. It doesn't really get hung up on it a, a, a ton. I'd rather have a wheel that could actually turn and flex when it hits the terrain than just having like a big fuel tank or some type of box here that just straight up catches. So these things do pretty well over stuff. Yes, you can get caught on things. I do understand that it isn't really a high sitting truck, but in perform performance wise, I really love this truck. Also, it is the most stable truck out of all of these Western Star DLC trucks. Very surprising, but I actually actually love it. It kind of gives me the white Western Star balance properties. It feels very, very balanced. So, and even with all these add-ons, I believe it actually handles them well. Not every truck that has a ton of add-ons is considered versatile in my opinion. However, I think versatility comes from the ability to handle these add-ons and do the jobs that are set forth with these add-ons. And I think this truck can do all of these pretty darn well. So yeah, we're going to leave that truck where it lies. Next one is going to be the 49X. The 49X was a standalone DLC back in the day. Same engine at 220,000 torque. It is the second lightest vehicle in this class at 10.4 US tons. I believe this should be a heavy duty truck. It probably would sit among the higher parts of the heavy duty class just from power and its weights and such like that. However, I think some folks could probably call this truck tippy. I believe it does have a little bit of cab sway when you're turning. I think it's around average. It has surprised me. And then there have been times where I've kind of felt like, hey, this could be a tippy situation that this could might not handle as well. However, as you can see, I'm pretty much always going to try to use low saddle if I can, if the vehicle fits it. But this truck can do a lot of other things as well. Probably not as much as the 1430 in my humble opinion. But anyways, if you want lateral, more lateral stability, change your, your tires from UOD 2s to the OMDs and you'll get some more lateral balance and its add ons are actually really great has a ton of them so you pretty much can do a lot of uh, different things i think if you're going to do short logs medium logs your balance is going to be a factor has a dead axle here as well big eyesore and it's a, it's basically a double so that might turn some people away however i don't really think that's a, a huge factor some people use it for sticking balance down but however i just want all my weight set on my back tires um, getting the most traction as i can Anyways, that is a good truck. I think if it was reclassed, it would probably sit up there a lot among the highest in the heavy duty. Moving on to the 1424. This was actually one of my favorite trucks that came out in the Western Star Wolfpack DLC when it first released. It was the only one to have a diff lock, a switchable diff lock. And then they added a all wheel drive switchable here. It has the high, the biggest tires that you can get out of the Western Star Wolfpack DLC and also the 49X as well. So it has the same engine as them all. This engine right here, the 2850 TC at 210, 220,000 torque. This is the lightest vehicle in, its, in this class at 9.2 US tons. I believe it would fit well in the heavy duty class. You could use the high range gearbox on it, raised suspension active. I would use the raised if you want the 48 inch tires. I'm also sitting on JAT OMDs right now because I would like lateral balance. And the reason I want lateral balance is because I have a roof rack on top of my, my cab right now, as you can see. Something that happens with this truck is when you put this roof rack on, I believe it does affect its stability and you'll see the cab sway when you're turning left and what right. Hence the reason I have these JAD OMDs on to potentially give me a wider footprint and more balance. However, I am deriving a lot of my balance through low saddle and creating angles with my truck and trailer. And that is kind of how I play this truck as basically a prime mover. It does have a few other add-ons like a sideboard bed. There's no crane period, so you're not going to be able to use that. It is really good at hauling long logs just because it's power throughput, uh, lighter weight. So it does have a lot of power to weight overhead. But essentially, I use this truck as a low saddle. I think it does really well. I think this would probably rank a lot higher if there could throw a crane on here and then maybe potentially push this saddle a little bit back, maybe center between these wheels. However, the down sloping rear frame uh, helps with, with saddle collision. So I do like this as a, uh, a low saddle hauler. It does really well um, in my humble opinion. Okay, let's move on here. Let's talk about the Navistar. Let's pull the Navistar up here. 
I think the Navistar last time I ranked it in a B as a strong B. I think it still kind of stays in a sense. You can see I did move the 1430 up a little bit because I think the 1430 is it's just exceptional in my humble opinion. But the Navistar is a very, very good prime mover. Okay, so the Navistar ranks here at 17.7 US tons. This truck maybe could be reclassed to an off-road. I don't know. It could just stay here. 49 inch tires, so they're not necessarily small. They're larger than the average. They're not 50s, but 49 inches is actually pretty decent. You can see I have the high range gearbox on it because it will actually float. <laughs> not float, but it will fly. So race suspension, OHDs. I don't think it's balance is bad. I actually think it's pretty good. I think it's either around average or above average at best. It pretty much doesn't have many add-ons, but the add-ons it does have, it does really well. I don't really think it should be a high saddle truck to use. I think it's more a low saddle truck or just a straight up log hauler. And so it does have 210,000 torque. It's really heavy weighted. It has heavy weight tires. This truck does extremely well, in, in my humble opinion. I think if you're going to drive it first person, be aware because... You might have to switch up your windows here. But uh, yeah, this this truck has been really good. Another thing, a huge downside of this vehicle is it burns fuel like crazy. It does have a relatively large fuel tank at 340 liters or 90 gallons. Always on all wheel drive. It does not have diff lock. This is very similar to the 1424. However, slipping this thing into high range kind of negates the whole need for a diff lock if you can get this thing rolling because these tires just dig in and it just goes really fast. So as a prime mover, I think it's really, really strong. Okay, moving on, you probably can hear me sitting down my controller. So uh, just uh, bear with me on that one. I'm gonna throw the Pacific P512 up in here and we will talk about the Pacific P512. Okay, Pacific P512. I believe the Pacific P512 is a smaller version of the P16, but with more versatility. Basically, it comes in at 14.9 US tons. It shares this same engine here with, I believe, the Dairy 3194, also the ANK Mark 38, 210,000 torque. I use the off-road gearbox with this because it has a switchable diff lock. You could potentially get away with high range because this truck actually has buffed coatings in its rear tires or in its whole tires it has increased coating so essentially it has you know cat 770g pacific p16 type style coatings in this tire so they're really really good no raised suspension it does have 51 inch ohd tires you can use the jets if you would like i think just using these is pretty much the move you're want, going to want to set weight on its rear axles because that is the main driving force. You want these to press in. You want these to generate more traction with weight. I do feel like this truck does a really good job with uh, being versatile. However, trucks that don't have all wheel drive, there's just these certain scenarios that you can get into where having all wheel drive, you just feel like you're really missing out. However, all things considered, this truck actually does do really well in muddy situations. It's, uh, it's collision model is pretty okay. I, I think it does a really good job. Um, I love using it for hauling logs, to be honest. Do things like this because of its longer frame. Kind of reminds me of the White Western Star 4964, but uh, just probably better performance through, through mud. So I think this one's a good truck. Um, definitely one I think you should try if you have not tried it. Okay, so let's move on here. I'm actually going to toss, this is a, a change for me. I'm actually going to toss the P12 up at the top of the B tier. And people are probably going to lose their minds over this because uh, a lot of people really do complain about the P12, but I find myself coming back to it quite a bit. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit of detail. So the P12, I've actually been using this a lot on season 12. To be quite honest, I've used this a lot on my hard mode. And even when I started my hard mode, one of the first trucks I bought in Michigan was the Pacific P12 here. And when I did, I was on stream and a lot of people actually were kind of saying, why are you buying the P12? Like, what's the issue? Like the P12 stinks. Why would you even purchase this? It struggles with power. Yes, it does struggle with power because it is a heavier weight vehicle at 28.9 tons. Shares the same engine here with the Pacific P512, 
and the ANK at 210,000 torque. However, this power to weight probably should see or sit lower because yeah, it just doesn't have a lot of power because of that, because it's just a very, very heavy vehicle. 57 inch tires. I use the OHDs for more lateral stability. If you wanted to get better pulling power up a hill, I've talked about this on a previous video. I would go check that out. I'm not going to get into all that stuff right now. OHD tires is pretty much my move, which I use most of the time. But this truck, I believe, is one of the better heavy crane trucks in the game. Super high platform. You can see how your your legs come up almost to the top of your tires. And I just think it's a good stable platform to use things like that. Gets the multi-purpose add-on. I really don't use it with this just because it saps away so much power to weight just such a such a heavy add-on but if you can get away with using it go ahead but i think in in logging and just being an overall support vehicle this is this has been a great vehicle for me to be honest hauling mission trailers in season 12 using this vehicle actually has been a more satisfying performance than say the p16 and i think for a heavy truck having this many add-ons it's it's kind of crazy because this is a base game vehicle and it just can do a lot of things despite having uh power issues which to be honest i've gotten around throughout my hard mode i i still bring it out pretty much every map and use it in some form and capacity so i really am uh, i'm bullish when it comes to the p12 so that's just my personal opinion all right moving on here let's talk about the p16 I think the P16, um, I don't think it's necessarily a high B. I think it's a mid B or even like a lower class B. All right, the P16. Okay, it has the same engine pretty much as the ANK Mark 38, the Pacific P512 PF, and the P12. Excuse me. It, it weighs actually quite a bit at 29.9 tons. Advanced special gearbox is probably, probably what I would use or the special gearbox as well, pretty much your call. It does have special coatings, like I mentioned, for dirt and mud, as I mentioned on the P512PF, just basically scaled up to 57 inches. However, because this vehicle does struggle with, with power, it is the lowest power to weight vehicle in the game shared and sharing that same position pretty much with the Pacific P12, you could get away with using a jet tire to essentially allow your wheels to slip a little bit more to gain some type of forward movement because if this tire, this tire here digs in and get generating crazy amounts of traction and your engine can't overcome that, that's when you get wheel lockups. So if you're having trouble with power, you could downgrade to an OH, OHD jet. And I think you'll have a little bit better time uh, cresting hills or just going up hills in general with with cargo. However, I do really like to use the P12 or the P16 for what it is. It essentially is a high saddle hauler and long logs. Um, I really do try to pull this truck out to use it a lot, and I believe it does those things relatively good. Even in season 12, I still brought it out. I still used it for the special mission trailer. For long logs, it does it really well. However, I believe that this truck probably should get a buff with an engine that could be reflective of its real life prowess. I think maybe a 250,000 torque engine I think would be appropriate maybe for this and the P12 would be nice. But however, I still come back to use the Pacific P12 and I, I think because of its tire codes, its weights, its stability. And overall, it's just uh, an iconic truck here. I'm going to put it in the lower in the lower B. Okay, so moving on, let's talk about a truck that had some issues back in the day and then got some buffs. So let's talk about the Dairy 3194. So the Dairy Longhorn 3194, this truck back in the day, I believe only had always on all wheel drive. However, I'm not sure when this was updated, but I believe they at some point maybe after season one or even later i can't really tell you it's all these seasons are kind of blending together i've been playing snow runner way too long uh it got always on diff lock as well and since then its performance has increased when you have always on features your performance in pretty much every uh phase of the game it just generally increases 
However, another truck that actually struggles with power to weight is this one here. And we actually focused on this vehicle on a pulling test in a prior video about downgrading tires to get better performance on pulling things. Not gonna get into that here. However, what I would probably do is you could either use the, fine, the high range, the off-road, I would probably use high range or off-road depending on your personal style. It does not get in any type of raised suspension. 52 inch OHD tires, that's probably what I would use unless I needed some pulling power and I would probably downgrade from a more grippy tire to a less grippy tire to uh, allow myself to actually turn tires because the engine and the power to weight issues. Anyways, the truck is essentially a specialist for high and low saddle. I think for low saddle it does do pretty well and also has this drop axle here that does sit pretty low. I never use it. I don't think you should use it. I think uh, having pressing weight down on your rear rear axles is, is the better move. I don't really find purpose for a lot of these things. If you do, that's great. I currently really don't, but I don't really use it as a high saddle. I have other trucks to do that and you'll see those come up here as we uh, continue this list. Another thing I need to mention about the Pacific P16 as well, when you're talking about high saddle, going back to the Pacific P16 here is it does still have one of the highest sitting saddles in the game. Um, so that is kind of cool. This one, not so much, but for low saddle, it actually does pretty well. One thing that did get a ding here, other than it's just power to weight issues, it is a very heavy truck, actually at 24.7 US tons. However, Another thing that kind of gives it a ding is its turning radius is terrible. So I believe this truck sits in the lower side of the B just because its power is kind of lackluster and also its maneuverability is just not the best, especially if you want to haul a another saddled trailer that's another really long piece of equipment that's attached to you. I think maneuverability is, is kind of why I kind of set this down a little bit farther, but I do generally like the, the 3194, so I would definitely give it a try. Okay, moving on here. Let's throw the Azov Antarctic in here. This is kind of crazy because I think I had this ranked probably in the C category last time, and I, I was thinking about this brainstorming, and I actually decided to move this truck up. So the Azov Antarctic, it has a 260,000 torque engine, it's actually the fourth heaviest vehicle in the game, coming in at 33.8 US tons. Advanced special gearbox, um, always on all-wheel drive, switchable diff lock, and a decent sized fuel tank. It has a few add-ons here, basically ramped towing platform. I probably wouldn't use this as such just because it's balance issues. Uh, sideboard bed, flatbed, um, loader crane, and then also the long log carrier. I've used it, this as such. It actually has done pretty decent for me, but for other people, it might not do as well. However, you can see I have the jet tires sitting on here, and that's because I wanted more lateral stability because these tires are just a little bit wider than the normal MSH, and that's something that really kind of held this vehicle back. In a straight line, deep performance, this truck ranks up there with top five, I believe. It helped me out a lot in a more going over to get warehouse trouble set in Erska River. Basically going over there, attaching this trailer, bringing it back to the warehouse, and then you have metal beams. Then essentially it has a sideboard bed to haul those metal beams, right? To get those bridges kind of set. However, if you're going to put this truck in a tippy situation, it is not going to do very well has a very, very tall sit, sitting, sitting silhouette. If you put loads on here as well, it's not going to do really well with that because it's going to increase this vertical center of gravity and it's also articulated. So here's the issue with the articulation. It doesn't feel really strong. Hitting terrain can kind of jar your articulation around. This is a hinge articulation. It's not like a ball joint. It's like some other articulated vehicles similar to, I would say the CAT 745C, which is very stable. This is not a very stable truck because of that. And I think because the articulation and just the overall high um, high silhouette of it, yeah, I, I didn't think it needed to go anywhere other than B or low B, but I think just because of its off-road prowess through deep conditions, I did feel like I should sneak it in here as a B. And lastly, this is probably going to shock you guys because I did rank this one a little higher before, is the Kirovets K7M. So the Kirovets K7M currently has 
the largest tires in the game at 79 inches and you can see their doubles they are massive um, the Kirvets comes in at 24.4 us tons sits around like middle of the pack ish it has this kz gt8 420 tango engine so the problem here is the Kirvets is a massive vehicle but it has less torque than its brother the k700 at 170,000 torque so Essentially, I'm gonna kind of really breeze by this. The only really thing I've used this truck for is farming. And I think after farming, even though through deep snow, deep mud, it probably is the best performer because of these tires of any vehicle. I'm pretty sure it will still beat the Femme in a lot of those deep conditions. The only thing is it's articulated it takes a while to get there and also its engine power is not that good and to be honest in a lot of these areas that you tip trucks over and you have to rescue the truck that you're bringing out it would behoove you to bring a truck that's actually maneuverable because you might have to actually squeeze yourself in somewhere and this truck being so wide and so articulated and you know articulated steering and such i don't think i would be inclined to use this over something else however I know people probably can use this truck for that, those things, but if I was going to try to tip over a very large truck with 170,000 torque and already a very heavy vehicle, um, I think this is actually one of the lower power to weight vehicles in the game as well. This is probably not gonna be my pick. So to be honest, even though it, I think it snuck up here into, or it stayed in the B just because of its, its off-road ability in deep conditions. It's, I don't, I don't wanna say second to none, but it's, it's up there among the highest. But for me personally, whenever I have to go do a rescue, I'm never really considering the K7M as the vehicle to do it. So that's kind of like where I felt it should be. Okay, so moving on to our A tier, I'm gonna throw up two vehicles here and we'll talk about those right now. The ta both Tatras essentially for the T813 and T815 Tatra Force. I believe these are A tier. So we'll talk about the Tatra T813 first. This truck comes in at 260,000 torque. It's shared with a lot of vehicles. This engine right here it used to be the most powerful in the game. So it gets it to S plus at 17.2 US tons. I think it's power to weight is pretty good. Has a, a roof rack on top, has a fuel capacity of 101 gallons equating to I think 380 liters. This is one of the more efficient trucks in the game to be quite honest. Advanced special gearbox, yeah. It's going to have a lot of range. I've actually used this truck and, and been able to keep it out in the field doing many things on one tank of gas and also with the supplies it has on its roof rack. However, it doesn't have a lot of add-ons that it can do. I have used the saddle high to haul some trailers out of Northern Aegis installation with a lot of help. Let's just say that. It doesn't have the highest sitting saddle. However, I think this would be a candidate to maybe give a low saddle to, I don't know, with, with the whole balancing in the game. But even though it doesn't have a lot of add-ons in the game, I think it pretty much can handle most of these add-ons. Uh, saddle high, probably with a little bit more trouble. Tatra sideboard bed, you can hook up another trailer here, um, but just be aware that with not having an always on diff lock, I believe you're just gonna lose some power to your axles. I kind of talked about this in the review, good ways around this, high gear, auto, stuff like that. But this truck, honestly, and its brother, I'm gonna say this a lot, they're like diff lock monsters. As soon as you have your all wheels, you're always, your all wheel drive on and your diff lock engaged, this is when you get the best performance out of this truck. Also, its stability is superb. You can see, you can't really see down here, but you can see the camber of the of the uh, wheels. And this is due to the Tatra backbone. If you wanna know more, I've actually talked about this in a very little bit of detail on its review. Go check that out. But anyways, truck has great balance. It goes very far on one tank of gas. Its off-road ability is pretty good. So I thought that putting it into the A, I think behooves me to do so. So let's move on. Let's talk about the Tatra T815. Tatra TA15 also has the Tatra backbone. However, you can see that it's it seems a little bit front heavy because the camber is not as present as it is in the back. 
and also shares the same engine at 260,000 torque. It actually is just a little bit heavier at 17.3 US tons. Does have a roof rack as well. You can see all the, all the fuel and supplies up there to repair and refuel itself. This also has pretty decent consumption, 50 inch tires. This truck actually doesn't have as good as a balance as the TA13. And I think it's kind of a little bit worse when you put things like this on there. And also when you put the Tatra crane on there as well, because I don't think it adds any type of value unless you use a wider set tire, which would probably be a JAT um, to give yourself a, just a little bit better of a footprint to keep yourself on its wheels. So that could be an option. Also, you do have the multi-purpose add-on here. However, I think with the multi-purpose add-on, you might have to watch your balance in some sense. So. Overall, I do like this vehicle a lot. I really use it as a, uh, a support vehicle now, and it just can get to places that uh, a lot of other trucks can't. And it also has the same fuel value as a, I think a saddled trailer, 529. Yeah, so also same thing. It's pretty much just a diff lock monster. If you have everything locked down, it does really well performance. Outside of those gears, not so much unless you just force it into high, which it will go into high pretty easily. But yeah, I think if they had, if these features were always on, this truck probably would sit at the top of the class, maybe even move up, who knows. But I think at its current state, I think it definitely is an A. So that is where the both Thatcher brothers will stand. Okay, so moving on, we're gonna talk about the twin steer. The twin steer, in my opinion, I'm going to try to be very short about this vehicle because it actually doesn't have any add ons. You can see I have the jet tires on it because I kind of went in between of using no race suspension, double tires or um, the regular single narrows. I kind of went in between with the jets here, just doing some testing on stream. Anyways, this truck, I think based on the player that you are, this truck can either reward really good play or punish bad play. And this is where I think this truck probably takes the mo the highest skill to use and to master. But once you do, I believe if you are really good at this truck, it would probably go to S tier for me. However, I'm not too great at using this truck. I think I'm still good. I have dabbled in some speed running. However, if you look at the speed runners and who have broke records in speed running, this is really the bread and butter of, of moving cargo and speed running contest essentially the 6900 twin steer comes in at 250,000 torque i believe it weighs around 23.9 us tons you can see the high range gearboxes on there this truck is extremely strong 63 inch tires has a very very big um engine it also has a very big fuel capacity it can chug some fuel though and bad thing about it is it just doesn't have any add-ons that's the thing. It is really just a specialist when it comes to cargo and moving it fast. So I believe if you're a good player, you could probably use this thing to great effect. If not, this one probably would sneak down to B, but I think if you are a good player, this probably can move it right up to S. For me personally, I think I'm trying to go in between here. I think that putting it in A is a pretty good spot for it to, to be sitting. So that's kind of like my thoughts there. Anyways, let's move on here. This is kind of going to be a shocker. I think the Aramatsu Forester actually goes into the A. So the Aramatsu Forester actually isn't a very strong truck when it comes to torque, right? I believe this engine here is 192,000 torque. The vehicle itself is 20.5 US tons, so it's very heavy. Has an engine that's really not that strong. It has an always on all wheel drive and it's diff lock is switchable. I kind of wish they were both switchable. If you're gonna give any switchable, just make them both switchable to be honest. Um, does get pretty big tires at 52 inches. You can use the Jats if you want. You probably could if you really wanted to. For me personally, it doesn't really matter. Um, I probably might turn over to use them now that uh, the MHS 2s just, they're wider, but they don't really affect the balance. Its balance is absolutely superb and it is a specialist essentially for hauling logs. And I think because it's one of the best vehicles in the game that can do it, it is basically a safety net. I talked about vehicles being a safety net and a vehicle I dropped the name was, was the Tegas 6436. 
this vehicle for logging is a godsend for folks that really don't like logging. You can move a lot of logs with this thing unpacked and then essentially just deliver them to a location and it negates the, the use it negates any type of use for using a sideboard semi-trailer to move logs through or multiple trips. You could essentially just stack unloaded logs in this cradle, take them out, pack three, pick the other ones up and deliver all these in pretty much one go. So yeah, I, I think just because that this vehicle is probably the best when it comes to logging and just being absolutely safe, slow, but safe, I'm going to, I'm going to definitely say it's going to be an A. I think the last tier list, I think I, I didn't think about those things as much and coming to think about it again with a little bit of thought, I do think this, this vehicle is definitely worthy of being in the A. So I do think a lot of people do lean upon it. I definitely do, especially on hard mode because yeah, logs can get pretty crazy, especially with the quantities, right? So yeah, that's going to stay there. Let's move on to the Dairy Longhorn. I think the Dairy Longhorn 4520 slides up into A as well. And this might be my bias, but I'm going to explain what I mean. Dairy 4520. So the 4520 actually, before its update in season six, it's it actually had a, it was the worst power to weight vehicle in the game. At 192,000 torque, however, it got bumped up to 230. I actually wish this would be much higher to be quite honest, but I'll take it. 192 going up to 230, I'll take it. Much better. However, it does burn a good bit of fuel. It does have a pretty good fuel capacity to, to combat that. And also it can turn off its all wheel drive and it has it's basically an eight by eight. So you're powering all your rear axles with no penalty because you don't have all wheel drive attached which is the off-road gearbox it has a 40% all-wheel drive penalty. So yeah, you can still get really good performance even out of all all-wheel drive or out of yeah, all-wheel drive switchable. 50-inch tires. You can see I'm using the Jats on it right now. However, I would probably use the OHS2 um, or you can use the single OHDs. It's the only truck in the game currently that has a single OHD1 track tire. So, just kind of like a little bit of a tidbit of knowledge there. It really only can do logs, saddle high, saddle low. I pretty much use it as saddle low and logs, and it does them really, really well. One thing I love about this vehicle is it actually has a rear steer and front steer as well. So if you do get yourself into a tippy situation, I do believe this truck is very stable, to be honest. And if you get your truck into a tippy situation, all you have to do is either turn downhill fast or uphill, because this vehicle can basically turn on the dime and if you can rotate your vehicle's um, front end or back end facing upward or downward quickly, you immediately stop your, your tip. So it does that really well. And also it's, it's maneuverability for how big it is, especially with hauling trailers is absolutely fantastic. So that's kind of why I threw it up in here because I'm just a, a, a low saddle enjoyer. So that's just my personal opinion. Okay, so this is gonna be a huge change here. The bore, I'm actually sliding the bore up to, to A, at the top of A. And for reasons I will explain, I'll try to be short about this too. All right, so the bore 45318 comes in at 23.1 US tons, has a 260,000 torque engine. Um, its gearbox options are among like the medium trucks-ish. It doesn't have an advanced special option to give it better fuel savings, however, I think it does really well with these. This is a very fast vehicle for how big it is. Gets a raised suspension option, 58 inch tires, and actually gets the heavy set tire option. Before it did not get those, it actually had the medium weight set tires. And ever since it got a heavier set wheels, I do believe its performance has increased. I won't get into my reasonings why, that'll be for a later video, but anyways, Pretty much for every add-on it has, it suits it very well. It's exceptional at carrying long logs. It uh, has a van body add-on, the seismic vibrator module as well. It can do all these things really well. I think it hauls, I think it's specialist is uh, being a saddle high hauler. It still has one of the higher sitting saddles in the game. I'm not sure what its actual position. It's probably like number five-ish maybe with, with all the new additions that have come into the game, but still that's pretty respectable, especially for a sub 60 inch tire vehicle, right? Its fuel capacities lack luster for a vehicle of its size. 
Um, it's ground clearance is great. It has a huge nose though. So it's something you might want to look out for. It does burn a ton of fuel just because when you have your all wheel drive engaged, you are accumulating either a 30 or a 40% penalty there based upon your gearbox option. But anyways, I think this vehicle is super strong. It's actually becoming one of my favorite special mission trailer haulers. It is very maneuverable. It has a very short sitting frame and it's a massive vehicle and it does really, really well. So if you haven't used the bore, you haven't given it a try. It came out in season three essentially. And um, the more I use it, the just the more I love it. So I would definitely go check it out if you haven't already. Okay, so moving on to the S tier, as you can see, there's a lot of trucks that go up into the S tier, and that's because there have been a lot of new additions that have been very strong. And also, my feelings on some other trucks actually have increased, and some some pull back a little bit, but we're gonna talk about two trucks that I think could be reclassed to the off-road class, but I think for now, they at least go into the S tier, and I think these it's these two vehicles right here, and we'll talk about these, but anyways, I think these two vehicles right here they have a lot of versatility, right? And unlike a lot of these trucks here, they only have a few add-ons, but they have really good off-road prowess and such. Uh, it's kind of hard to rank the heavy class in this because you're kind of ranking apples to oranges in some regard. But anyways, I think these two trucks will probably always stay in the S for me. And we'll talk about these in a little bit of detail. So the Azov 73210, comes in at 260,000 torque at 22 tons, 22.1 US tons actually. Gets an advanced special gearbox, so no all-wheel drive penalty, has always on all-wheel drive and diff lock, very high fuel capacity at 93 gallons. I think that's 350 liters. It does really well with fuel uh, capacity, really well with fuel efficiency, and it gets an active suspension that comes along in season four, which is absolutely needed. There have been multiple buffs to this vehicle to help it off-road even better. So I use the basically the OHS twos because I think this vehicle is very stable. Um, I know it does have some weight in its cab. However, it just does all things well. There's really not much really to say. It does everything well. There's not really much that it, it can't do. All of its add-ons it pretty much can support. And most folks will say that this vehicle is just a wonderful vehicle to play with. There is one little issue though. And the issue is the front end. However, this has been buffed to where it actually clips through terrain and not this hitbox doesn't necessarily just stop it. Um, that was something that happened when the game first dropped. That's why I didn't use it when the game first dropped. But however, they buffed it, especially with that in the active suspension. This vehicle definitely deserves a spot to be up here, in my opinion. And then we'll talk about the 5600 TS. The 5600 TS, pretty much for me, in a lot of ways, stays configured in this fashion, especially in hard mode, just because it burns fuel like no, like nothing I've never seen. Um, actually, I have seen some things burn some crazy amounts of fuel as well, but this is definitely one of them. Um, the fuel capacity is not too great. It burns a ton of fuel, but also it is a very impressive vehicle off-roading. As you can see, switchable always on, or switchable all-wheel drive and switchable diff lock, 50 inch off-road tires. I use the OHDs pretty much. Um, you can switch your tires up if you want something different. It's very balanced very balanced vehicle. Its suspension properties are amazing. Watching this thing crawl over rocks, it almost looks like a caterpillar. Um, and I think that's another contributor of its balance. It does pretty much everything that you can put on it really well, to be quite honest. Um, the expanded fuel tank, this is something I use on hard mode because yeah, lots of fuel. This is a great support truck to do so. But in normal modes, yeah, if, I, I would definitely use this thing in, in another fashion. Something I wish it could do is use a fuel tanker with a low saddle here, kind of like the Kenworth does with the high saddle. That'd be kind of cool. But anyways, I can't really say enough about this truck. Really, the only downside to it is its fuel consumption and its fuel capacity. But I don't feel like those two things hold this vehicle back from where it should be placed. So I do think these are definitely strong S tiers. Okay, let's move on here. I'm gonna talk about the CAT 745C. For me personally, the CAT 745C is always gonna be an S tier. The CAT 745C I usually have configured with a fuel carrier. 
it's probably one of my main use rescue vehicles, even though it is articulated. Its engine is 250,000 torque. It weighs 31.5 US tons. Van Special Gearbox, there's no all wheel drive penalty, it has switchable all wheel drive, switchable diff lock, 71 inch tires, pretty big fuel tank. Its fuel consumption can get to points I don't like to see. However, they're not like 5,600 TS values, which is good. So it essentially can do ev all these add-ons really well. I usually use it as a fuel tanker. I kind of wish this value was elevated here because this is a very big tank. I think that should, should happen at some point and for medium logs only. And it can do these things really, really well. Something that is exceptional about this vehicle is its balance. Its articulation up front, even though it is an articulated vehicle, I know people don't like driving them. This is probably a truck that I would like to drive the most out of any articulated vehicle because this this uh, joint right here, I would it's kind of considered not just necessarily a hinge joint, but I would say it's almost like a ball joint. So it's cab. It's cab up front moves independently from its rear. So if this gets jarred off balance, its rear is on the former terrain that's before it goes over. So it kind of goes over as separate entities and kind of can just balance itself in that way. It's just a wonderful vehicle. Probably one of the more stable vehicles I've, I've come to find in the game. I can't remember the last time I've tipped this vehicle over. And I think if I have in my, I would say my youth in SnowRunner, it probably maybe was once and that's pretty much about it. But this vehicle is is definitely um, one of the best in my opinion as a focused support vehicle. So I think it stays where, it, where it's at. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about two vehicles here and that's gonna be the Colobs. I think the Colobs actually go up here. I, I like these, these two vehicles a lot, to be honest. And we'll talk about these in very, very minor detail. 74760, 260,000 torque. It is the heaviest vehicle in this game. If you're counting wheel weights, which I just started recently doing this. Actually, thank you, Vlad Vulcan, for, for helping me with that. So I've actually been trying to update my, my weights to be a little bit more accurate. So this vehicle clocks in at 37.2 US tons, heaviest vehicle in the game. Therefore, it gets the most grip from its weight and it is a wonderful vehicle to be quite honest. Gets an active suspension here, can get itself up out of the terrain easier. Um, you can use the JATs, you can use the MS, MSH2s. It just all depends on what you wanna use. I've been testing out different ones. It only has a high saddle and its saddle heights and its ability to pull saddled trailers or special mission trailers or high saddle trailers in general is absolutely phenomenal. These two trucks have been amazing. This one here has more fuel. It has always on all wheel drive and diff lock. So you're going to get more performance out of low gear or out of the, in your other gears other than just low. So this one is just really awesome. Another reason I do like the Colobs is they are very, very maneuverable as well. They can turn relatively sharp for how big they are. And they are actually pretty massive. So that's another thing I really like about them is they're very focused, but they do the job really well. And I think they can serve a lot of a lot of purposes, even though they only have really one add-on pretty much. Same thing here with the 747, the 74941, same engine here. Um, it is a little bit lighter. It comes in actually at, I think this is the third heaviest vehicle in the game at 34.6 US tons. So it is very heavy, active suspension as well, only saddle high. This vehicle right here has switchable features. And even though it, they do only have like sub 60 inch tires, these are very high sitting saddles, especially when you bump up your suspension mode, um, they can get pretty high. So they definitely are very viable for special missions, trailers, or just moving things with high saddle. Another thing these trucks can do, like I said before, very maneuverable. And one quick last thing about the 74941 is I believe they both have all of their weight set in their frame. However, this truck right here is actually much more stable than the 74760. I've tested this on stream. I've tested this when I was actually reviewing these trucks. It, you will be so hard pressed to tip this thing over. I almost want to just straight up declare this truck the, the most stable truck in the game. It's kind of crazy. 
if anyone wants to see this stuff, come to my stream. I will legitimately show you. It's it's kind of a crazy thing, but you will be very hard pressed to tip this over. And I think that's a wonderful thing. So yeah, these trucks definitely go up in there because they're just maneuverable. What they do, they do it extremely well. They're pretty much elite and they, they've been doing it since 2020. So I think I'm gonna give them their respect and put them up there. Okay, next I'm gonna talk about the Kenworth. Kenworth slides in at a pretty strong, it's pretty, pretty strong S tier to be quite honest. So the Kenworth came out in season 10, okay? And the year three pass has essentially started putting out these vehicles that are super large, you know, 70 inch tires in, or, you know, massive tires. And they just been receiving crazy amounts of add-ons, right? The Kenworth, in my opinion, is almost like a larger version of the P12 with more add-ons, essentially. More capacity, or yeah, just a larger version, to be quite honest. The Wonder engine, I believe, comes in at 265,000 torque. This vehicle is the number two heaviest vehicle in the game at 36 tons. It gets 71 inch tires. If it's customs, that's what I probably would use based upon my findings of pulling power. That's probably gonna be your best bet for to avoid axle freeze, but you can use other tires as well. And it has a ton of add-ons. And I do believe, I do believe this truck still has the highest sitting saddle in the game. Something that bugs me about this truck is people say that it's it's kind of power power starved and I wouldn't I wouldn't say they're wrong. But the thing is the vehicle was given more add-ons than most trucks in the game. You can just go through this list and just look at all these things it's given. And the issue with that is they gave it so many things. If they would have given it more power, it just would have been way too strong. However, I actually would trade power or I would trade add-ons for more power and make this thing kind of like it is in real life with this uh, flatbed, just a high saddle hauler and just make it exceptionally good at, at those few things. But anyway, I think in its current position, the Kenworth has some of the highest fuel capacity in the game. It's just really good at what it does. So I think it's definitely S tier. I'm not, that's all I'm going to really say about it. If you want to see more about my reviews, you can go check those out. Okay, moving on here, let's talk about the Dairy Special. Dairy Special 15 Charlie 177. So the Dairy Special is a truck that came out in season nine. So remember how I kind of said that super trucks were coming out basically in the year three pass? Well, this was the first one. Okay, I think this is like the onset of when Sabre started just throwing these massive trucks at us that could essentially do everything. And they kind of power creeped the other classes in the game. And this is really where I think it it might have started. Some could say it started with like the 605R, um, which is, that, that's definitely a viable argument. However, vehicle comes in at 280,000 torque. So it is the number two engine in the game currently. It is very heavy at 29.4 US tons, advanced special gearbox, active suspension, um, dairy special tires, or you can use jets if you want more lateral balance. And it has a ton of add-ons to use. Um, even has this uh, fire tank that's exclusive to itself, and also the Mastodon has its own. So yeah, it can do a lot of a lot of things. Um, sideboard bed crane, hitch trailer option. If you if you like to do that, this is where I think Saber kind of went off the deep end with giving all these massive hawking trucks these all these crazy add-ons because yeah. You just see people just non-stop using these and it kind of turns into an easy mode. However, the truck does really well. And it was updated. It actually has a really good collision model. If you look at visibly where you should actually start to hit terrain is way down here. However, it's like right here now. So Saber has done a really good job of giving this thing a better turning radius and also giving it a more relaxed frame or frame vehicle collision mesh to go through conditions much more easy. Some things I ding about this truck is I think it's balance. It's frame is very rigid, so I think it can feel the effects of heavy add-ons and also just tippy terrain. You kind of have to watch yourself a little bit there, but overall, um, hauling saddles and even going and rescuing vehicles or just pulling power in general, it's very, very strong. So I definitely think it, it stays S tier in my opinion. All right, moving on, we're gonna talk about the Dan. 
The Dan actually was an A tier the last time we talked about this, but every time I get into the Dan, it impresses me and it just continually does. So we'll uh, we'll discuss this real quick. All right, so the Dan 96320, it has 260,000 torque, comes in at 18.3 US tons, active suspension here gets in season six and helps this thing become a much better off-roader with less collision on your front nose because the front overhang is actually quite large as you can see that probably is a main complaint about uh, folks in the community however very large fuel tank always on features 51 inch mud tires and it can do quite a lot it actually has a low saddle and what i would like to do with this truck is just load up its rear axles because it actually has a pretty good power to weight being that it isn't necessarily that heavy of a truck it pulls really hard its balance is exceptional i rarely ever turn this vehicle over its weight seems as if it's more front end heavy so what i like to do is just put as much weight on it as i can and yeah it performs really really good got this multi-purpose add-on and i actually think this truck might be one of the best candidates for using this because the dan it's its stability is superb in my opinion i say exceptional superb whatever you want to call it um handles this really well actually even going over unstable terrain i've seen this thing hold on because the frame flex is actually pretty good but it's it's rigid enough to where it doesn't really necessarily give to roll over it's just it's impressive but any add-on you throw on here the dan does it well and that's really all i have to say it's just a, a wonderful vehicle all right, let's talk about the FEM. I think the FEM, the FEM 37AT is actually the newest vehicle here in season 12. So here's nine, 10, and then here's season 12, right? And I think the FEM 37AT, I've talked about this in a lot of detail. I'm not, I'm gonna spare you all the detail here. I'm just gonna briefly say a couple things about the FEM and then we'll kind of move on here. So the FEM is essentially a, focused vehicle right it has the highest torque engine in the game at 288,000 torque it is number five uh heaviest vehicle in the game at 32.7 us tons advanced special gearbox has massive tire options at 71 inches it has a very high sitting saddle it is an articulated vehicle it burns a ton of fuel it only has 90 gallons 340 liters of it it burns around 5,600 TS values of fuel, and it can do a lot of things. There's actually a lot of add-ons for this truck. I think people might want more. However, I don't think it should have more. I think it should be a very focused vehicle to haul massive amount of cargo and that be its role, okay? It does have a high saddle. You can have a lot of success with this high saddle. It's not the highest in the game. I believe the Kenworth is still the highest. However, something I have come to find is the steering on this thing is just not satisfying to drive. And if you want to know more, please go check out my review on this. It talks about this in a little bit more detail. I'm not going to go into this in a lot of detail here, but essentially I think the FEM isn't the, it isn't the best truck in the game for me. I think it's for hauling eight slots of cargo or eight slots plus, yes. For hauling up hills and going through deep terrain, I would probably say the FEM is going to be one of the best trucks to do so. However, it's not a truck that I can throw at the game and just expect it to not succumb to everything. I I believe that its its balance can get upset from its articulation and it's it digging in and having weight and just get upset in that way. I've kind of talked about that. However, its weight is exceptional. It is exceptional. There's only a thousand kilograms in its cab. The rest is actually in its frame. But because of its articulation and how stiff it is, and it doesn't actually rotate on a different axis, if you do take a sharp turn and you upset yourself, you're pretty much going to go. And I've have shown that it has happened. Um, but the, this vehicle alone, I think, speaks for itself. It's the highest power in the game, and it's one of the heavier vehicles in the game. So. By right, it sits in the S tier for me, absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about this. The Mastodon, this is actually a purchase DLC vehicle that I'm actually very conflicted on, and we'll talk about this. 
I've spoken about this in too much detail. I'm not going to um, go into that little lecture here, but if you want to hear more, I would definitely talk about it. The Mastodon is a vehicle that I believe has way too many add-ons in the game. I believe it's essentially what folks would call a pay to win. And I know that we should not limit folks on what they should use. And it is not a, a game that is competitive. So let people use what they want to use if they want to pay money for it. However, this vehicle, I believe, is 260,000 torque here. It is a very heavy vehicle at 31.8 US tons, advanced special gearbox. Um, gets the ZHM tires. You also can use other options if you want. I would probably use the ZHM tires because they have a special codes and they actually got upgraded from being a, a normal heavy tire to a super heavy tire and they actually got increased um, width values as well. So I think these are a really good option. Also, this vehicle can essentially do most things in the game. Rear mounted crane, sideboard bed, hitch trailer, or if you even want to use a low saddle, it can use a low saddle crane. It is kind of insane in that way. High fuel capacity, good fuel efficiency, lots of fuel to call on from different from multiple roof racks and or utility supplies. This truck is just kind of crazy, to be quite honest. I don't really agree with all these add-ons, to be honest. I kind of wish this truck would be more in line of what it was back in its old days. However, it is what it is. I do think this is a very fantastic vehicle. I'm going to tell you guys a little bit, little story here about how effective this vehicle was in its pre buffed state. I'm talking when it only had heavy tires and not super heavyweight tires. If you go back to my streams and look at my more playthrough in the last couple episodes, this truck was one of the only trucks that have pulled those trailers out of Northern Aegis installation unassisted, completely unassisted by its own power, it did those with ease. I think I actually pulled them under an hour. It was it was really impressive. And even at certain points, like here, where you would get stuck and have, have a truck pull you up, coming out of this gateway, and then you come up to this area right here, and you're trying to crest this, uh, this hill and then turn left, this truck did it by itself. And only other trucks that pretty much could do that that I've pulled this with was a 605R. And yeah, and then not, not only that, it went through the river on, let's see here, the river on Cosmodrome, right through here, unassisted to deliver this to that area. So I think from those things, being unbuffed, it, it just, it's absolutely impressive. The, the amount of uh of power this has and its tire codes and just the things it can do so yeah it definitely sits up at the top of the tier to be honest i think it's it's very very wonderful however for me the 605r is still a top and i think people are going to say that it's that shouldn't be because the other trucks have more add-ons however add-ons for me and these large trucks really don't have much merit when I, when I send the vehicle to do a certain job, I want that vehicle to go out and I want to have complete confidence in that. And the only vehicle I can say that I have complete confidence and I can drive like a complete moron is the 605R. And I cannot worry about it. There have been times I flipped over the Zix 612 Mastodon over in a more. And I've been surprised that I've tipped over because it really wasn't that bad of an area to tip over in. And... I have rarely ever tipped this thing over ever since it came out. Um, it is one of my most trustworthy vehicles in the game. It's it's just quite crazy. No, it does not have the highest sitting saddle in the game. I still have used it. And I think there is a vast majority of people who have used the 605R to pull trailers out of a moor from the onset of season four. So I think most of the people that have played season four, they probably have used 605R to pull it out there and it's done it extremely well. I think it's probably one of the more stable vehicles in the game. It is actually very fast for being a big vehicle. Um, it's not super heavy. It is 29.1 US tons. It actually is pretty heavy, 260,000 torque. And it has still competed with the likes of the FEM. If you go back and look at my FEM review, 
I showed a comparison of these two trucks side by side pulling and this truck did things that the FEM could do uphill. Granted, the FEM will still pull weight up an incline like the British Columbia slope and this truck will not. However, I think the 605R in my opinion is just an overall, it's the king of snow runner for me. I think it'll pretty much stay that way unless something comes along, but the, a truck that I can have complete trust in is going to be the 605R over any of these. So that's kind of where I stand, guys, in my in my tier list. I hope this tier list has uh, has been informational. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. This is essentially where I would put these trucks. I think for this category, I've mauled this over. I really have for pretty much the last year. Every time a, uh, a DLC comes out, I'm wondering where I'm going to put it, how I'm going to fit this in here. And I think in the last three DLCs, you know, this is a this one right here is a purchased. Then we have season 10, season nine, season 12. There's been a lot of additions here. So I've really considered these um, a lot. And I think these sit up here, I think as well, just because of, of maneuverability, being able to pull trailers. I would, I would rather use this vehicle as like a special mission, massive hawking vehicle just to pull mass amounts of cargo. So anyway, y'all, Hope this uh, hope this was informational. Hope this was fun for you guys to watch. Uh, please give the channel a like, subscribe if you'd like to, and also check out my reviews on these trucks if you want to know more because I kind of breeze through those. So anyways, y'all, until next time, God bless and stay upright.